Planning Commission public hearing. The City encourages your interest and participation in the public hearing process. The Planning Commission is an advisory board to the City Council on land use and zoning matters. The meeting agenda items are development applications that require public hearings. The Planning Commission considers the request and makes a recommendation for approval or denial to the City Council. The City Council makes the final decision for or against approval of the application. The agenda consists of the roll call, minutes approval of the prior meeting, continuances are for items that will not be heard tonight, withdrawals are for items that have been withdrawn from any further consideration, consent agenda is for items not likely to require a presentation or discussion, all items on the consent agenda may be voted on together. Any commissioner may move any item from the consent agenda to the regular agenda. Regular agenda is where each item includes a presentation and recommendation by staff, a presentation by the applicant, and public testimony after the applicant has had the opportunity to respond to the public testimony. The Planning Commission then discusses the case and votes. Non-action is for items for discussion. No vote will be made by the Planning Commission. Citizens wishing to speak on any agenda item may fill out a blue speaker card or if not willing to speak, may fill out a yellow comment card and turn it in at the staff table, right over where the gentleman's raising his hand. There it is. Before the agenda item will be discussed. The chairman will call you by name when it, when it is your turn to speak. When called, come to the podium, state your name and address, and then begin speaking. Groups wishing to speak should elect a spokesperson to represent the views of the group. To facilitate the meeting, your comments will be limited to three minutes for individual speakers, one additional minute for each additional individual present at the meeting who has contributed their time to a representative speaker up to a total of 10 minutes. Please format your speech to be accommodated within the applicable time frame given. For convenience in timing presentations, a light system is installed on the podium. The lights will be green for two minutes and yellow for one minute. Please conclude your comments when the red light appears. Thank you for your interest and time. And now we will begin the meeting with a roll call. Chair Alessio. Here. Vice Chair Smith. Present. Commissioner Bollinger. Here. Commissioner Higgs. Present. Commissioner Serena. Present. Commissioner Fuki. Present. Commissioner Kush. Here. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Ask for a motion to approve the June 26, 2019 Planning Commission meeting minutes, including the study session. So we have a motion by Commissioner Kush. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Commissioner Serena. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0. We'll move to our regular agenda item. Uh, item number 2 on the agenda night is 3 UP 2019 JoJo Coffee House. <clears throat> Mr. Barnes. Chair Alessio, uh, members of the Planning Commission, I am Jeff Barnes with the City's Planning Department. Uh, and presenting to you uh, 3UP 2019, uh, which is uh, JoJo Coffee House's conditional use permit application uh, for live entertainment. The JoJo Coffee House uh, is a tenant uh, space in the Second Street Hub uh, multi tenant development at the southwest corner of Second Street and Scottsdale Road, uh, identified here on the, uh, the large scale aerial map. Uh, zoomed in uh, a bit, uh, the red highlighted uh, space is generally representing their tenant space at the south end of that development. Uh, the aerial photo is a bit older than uh, the uh, developed condition out there, and there is a north building uh, as well uh, across uh, the, the drive aisle from that that makes up the rest of the site. Um, the site carries the C3 uh, DO zoning and uh, getting back to that uh, constructed condition uh, this is the approved uh, development review board site plan uh, just to give you a, a better idea than that aerial did of how that site is laid out um, so it's two uh, multi-tenant buildings with uh, drive island parking in between them as well as parking off of the alley uh, to the west this uh, is a representative floor plan uh, for the uh, JoJo Coffee House tenant space, uh, highlighted uh, central uh, north uh, in the middle of the space is the identified performance area where they are uh, proposing to have coffee house style music performed uh, for the uh, 
basically ancillary component to their general operations as a restaurant. Uh, and those performances uh, they've identified uh, may be acoustic, uh, but may also be uh, amplified. And so the goal of their application is to be able to accommodate both uh, through, that, uh, through that process. Uh, as I've alluded to but identified here, the request before you today uh, is a request for conditional use permit for live entertainment uh, for the uh, JoJo Coffee House tenant space uh, within the Second Street Hub development with the C3DO uh, zoning at this location. As part of the uh, analysis uh, of the conditional use permit application, there are uh, a few general conditional use permit criteria that have been uh, evaluated uh, and accounted for regarding uh, potential impacts on surrounding businesses, surrounding area, uh, and, uh, and those sorts of uh, effects, as well as uh, 12 specific live entertainment uh, use permit criteria that uh, have been evaluated uh, as part of this application. Uh, and with that uh, analysis, staff's presenting before you a uh, recommendation of approval subject to the stipulations uh, in the staff report uh, for this application, seeing that uh, there does not appear to be a negative impact as a result of what they're asking to do. And that wraps up staff's report. Uh, if you've got uh, any questions specifically, uh, I'm happy to address them. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. Any of the commissioners have any questions for Mr. Barnes? Commissioner Higgs? Yes. Um, thank you for your presentation. Is this uh, coffee house completely enclosed, or is there indoor-outdoor seating? Will people be coming in and out? Uh, Chair Alessio, Commissioner Higgs, uh, this is uh, indoor uh, as their primary. They, they do have a small covered uh, walk space out in front, but the identified operations are to be contained within the building uh, with no outdoor amplification or anything okay. uh, that would uh, accommodate. Thank you. Any other commissioners with any comments or questions? I'm just wondering, is there going to be a stipulation not allowing karaoke? Because they shouldn't allow karaoke. Chair Alessio, Commissioner Cush, uh, I believe we uh, have not identified that, but the applicant can certainly uh, regulate what types of performances they allow. Any other questions, Commissioner Cush? Nope. Okay, good. Um, thank you, Mr. Barnes. We'll, we'll, more of a statement. Clearly. Um, now we'll have a presentation by the applicant. If you could state your name and address for the record, appreciate it. I'm Mike Melton, the uh, owner of JoJo Coffee House. And I'm not exactly sure what you're wanting for me to provide right now. Uh, you're welcome to make any type of a presentation on your behalf. Staff does a presentation, and the applicant's um, welcome to make a presentation. If, if you feel good with what staff's presentation was, then that's, that's great. Yeah, I think it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, Very good. Just be playing live coffee house music. Very good. Any questions by any of the commissioners for... The applicant. Mr. Commissioner Kush does not have any questions, so thank you very much. We All right, that was easy. Thank you. <laughs> we do not have any um, requests for any public comments, so with that, I'll ask for a motion by the commissioners. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Kush. I'd like to move to make a recommendation to City Council for approval of case 3 UP 2019 per the staff recommended stipulations. Based upon the finding that the conditional use permit criteria have been met. Very good. We have a motion by Commissioner Cush. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second by Commissioner Higgs. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations. Motion passes 7 to 0. We'll move on to um, item number 3 on our agenda. Uh, 17 UP 2012 number 4 bottled blonde Scottsdale rooftop bar. Mr. Bloomberg. Thank you, Chair Alessio. Commissioner is Greg Bloomberg here to give you a brief presentation on the bottle blonde application 17 UP 2004. The site is located uh, off Indian Plaza, south of Camelback Road on the north side of Indian Plaza. 
Uh, this is the Maya uh, Club here, W Hotel here. Uh, eventually, we hope, there will be a, Don, a new hotel here on the Don and Charlie site that's in the works. Close-up aerial of the uh, location. The roof deck essentially would be, I believe, just in this area here. And, yeah, okay. And the property is zone C2, uh, P3, uh, DO. P3 is just a parking overlay. So here's just a quick look at the site plan. Not much is changing on the site plan at all, with the exception of an external staircase. Uh, they need two means of ingress and egress to the uh, roof deck. So there's an internal staircase, and then there's going to be an external staircase. Uh, a portion of that external staircase will encroach into the city's right-of-way, so they will have to do a uh, private improvements in the right-of-way agreement for that. And they are trying to, or they are planning on maintaining a 14-foot clear sidewalk width from the curb to the stairwell. Uh, floor plan of the uh, roof deck, bar area here, some games here, a turf area here for gathering, and of course some tables and chairs. And one of the things that they're providing, uh, we heard from some neighbors to the north in the single-family neighborhood. Uh, that there were concerns about noise. And one of the things that uh, the applicant is proposing to help mitigate that is a wall, a very tall wall, as a matter of fact, an 18-foot wall here along the northern edge of that roof deck. The idea, of course, being to keep the noise uh, in towards the, uh, the district where all the activity is instead of uh, going off towards the uh, single family to the north. So some things for you to consider uh, as you mull this over. Uh, there is an updated security maintenance and operation plan that was approved by the police department. Uh, as required by ordinance, uh, they increased uh, the parking demand for the, uh, for the uh, establishment by 10 spaces, actually, based on the square footage of the deck. They've secured 12 remote parking spaces uh, to accommodate the proposed roof deck. Those spaces are within 600 feet. Uh, of the establishment as required by ordinance. Uh, we have, like I mentioned before, we have some public comment that uh, we received uh, from residents in the area expressing concerns about noise. Um, most of those comments were general in nature, but they were concerned that this operation was going to contribute uh, more noise to the overall problem. And as I also mentioned, uh, the 18-foot wall is proposed to limit noise trespass on the single family to the north. But there's also a stipulation uh, in the, for the case, number 10, that restricts the hours of operation for the speakers uh, to limit noise trespass on the multifamily residential to the south. And the primary reason for that is because the speakers are elevated. They're not down at street level. They're going to be elevated, so the sound is going to travel further. So we felt it was appropriate to have those speakers turned off by 10 p.m. Um, I, can, I think it was Sunday through Thursday and then at 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. So that's what that stipulation would require. Uh, that completes my presentation. We're available for any questions you may have, and the applicant has their own presentation as well. Thank you, Mr. Bloomberg. Any commissioners have any questions for Mr. Bloomberg? Commissioner Cush. Just one question. Are there any clubs in, the, we'll call this the club district, okay? Are there any clubs in the club district that have a, uh, a restriction on what time they have to turn their speakers off? that you're aware of? Because all of us Commissioner Cush, the closest one that I can think of is actually not in this area. It's the social tap. Um, uh, That's a ways off. It's I'm a ways off. The club I can't district. think of anything in, anywhere in this area where there's a stipulation like that. And that was just something you guys thought was a good idea based on some people's. We all know that uh, there's a lot of noise coming from the club district. Uh, so was that kind of what you based your decision on to set a restrictive date time? Uh, Chair Alessio and Commissioner Cush, we've done it in the past, like I mentioned, with Social Tap. Social Tap obviously is in a more, little more of an area where there's not residential nearby. I think the proximity of the residential being only 400 feet away in both directions, uh, we felt it was an appropriate stipulation. I've been a long-term uh, person who's been had problems with the sound issues down there, but I do have a problem, quite honestly, with treating someone differently than everyone else. That, you know, it should it should be a level playing ground and fair to everyone. So I'm just for what it's worth. Mr. Chairman and Commissioner Coach, I think also um, we're looking at this a little bit differently in terms of these newer proposals with the rooftop 
uh, second floor patios being introduced now into downtown. So we're trying to be as consistent as possible with that effort. Thank you. Any other commissioners? Commissioner yeah, Smith. So, yeah. On that point, didn't we recently approve a rooftop deck for whiskey something or other just down the street? I remember uh, the case, uh, wasted grain or next to wasted grain. I know for a fact we approved a deck, a rooftop deck. Yes, uh, Chair Alessio and Commissioner Cush, that's, that's the social tap, which is right across that the street. That is a social tap, break, okay. Yes. And that does have a 10, 10, 8, 10 p.m. restriction? I have to recall. I don't remember. Because that's on Stetson, if I'm not mistaken. We're 50. We did have, a, yes, we had a restriction. on. It. Actually, what we did with that one, I apologize, is we restricted the, we required them not to exceed 68 decibels within 100 feet of the establishment. That was the stipulation for that particular case. We did not restrict hours of operation for the speakers. Okay. Commissioner Smith, did you have a comment? That was my clarifying question because I reached out and asked that question, so I was confused as to what, if it was the decibel restriction or if it was the time restriction for social tap. So I think we got it straightened out. Thanks. Good. Any other, Commissioner Serena? Yeah, this, um, <clears throat> excuse me, this property is in the middle, basically sandwiched between the Mint, which I think the same applicant owns, and then the W, one at surface ground level and one on a second floor, both of which, I, as far as I'm aware, play music until 2 a.m. when they shut down. So with this facing the opposite direction and those both facing into neighborhoods at both a second level and ground level, why, just what's the thought process then to allow or recommend the Mint and W to play music till 2, and what's the thought process now? How is it different now when it's facing into the entertainment district versus the neighbors? Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Serena, I think uh, the attention to this one was that um, we have a new rooftop deck being proposed with a sound wall on the, uh, excuse me, on the north side and open air to the south that does face the entertainment district, but it also faces... Uh, an apartment building just south of the entertainment district. So there was a little bit of sensitivity that we thought was appropriate in our recommendation um, to try to tone that down uh, after uh, late evening hours um, for the benefit of that uh, multifamily residential project to the south. Um, but as a community, we're kind of cutting our teeth on this in terms of trying to find and strike an appropriate balance, but that's the rationale. Have you ever been uh, in front of uh, this establishment on Saturday night around 11 o'clock with uh, High Life across the street and Al Hefe on the corner? Mr. Chairman, uh, certainly both me and Mr. Bloomberg have, yes. Because I, I think that you could turn, uh, did you, who paid for the drinks? Um, I think you could turn this music off and, and you're not going to notice the, the, the sound from those other clubs is so intense. Um, I've said this before. I've had police officers tell me when side of their car with the windows rolled up at that location, they can't hear their radio. So, I, you know, maybe, I mean, I, I see the staff's point. I just kind of question whether or not really there's any real benefit to this, to anybody, in, in restricting them like this. Commissioner Smith, did you have a comment? Yeah, just well, just one other clarifying question. The stipulation that to turn off speakers is only for the the second floor rooftop, correct? Uh, Chair Alessio and Commissioner Smith, that's correct. The, so, the existing speakers down on the patio can stay stay on uh, until two two a.m. when okay. they. And that, yeah. but that's if I know the spot correctly, has kind of an open area, so up here turned off, but down here stay, stays on. That's correct. Any other comments or questions before we hear from the applicant? Thank you, Mr. Bloomberg. Presentation by the applicant. Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, Benjamin Tate with Withy Morris, 2525 East Arizona Biltmore Circle on behalf of the applicant. Uh, and I'm here as an advocate for the immutable truth that uh, enjoyed on a rooftop beer simply tastes better. <laughs> uh, I won't belabor the point too much because I think you're all familiar, relatively familiar with the facts at this point as far as where Bottle Blonde is, the context in which it exists, 
uh, and the ambient conditions in that area, which I heard some of the commissioners point out as far as light and noise is concerned until uh, all these establishments close. Uh, so this shows the existing uh, outdoor patio, which is covered there, and then the, the area on top obviously being where the, um, the proposed roof deck would go. This gives you a little bit better perspective of just a street level image of what the patio looks like right now and where the, the proposed roof deck will go. Uh, here's just a, a colored version of the image that staff showed you earlier that shows you where the bar is on the north side. Uh, behind the bar there to the north is that sound wall. That sound wall is 18 feet tall uh, to protect sound from encroaching too much to the neighborhood to the, to the north on the other side of Camelback Road. Some turf areas for games and then uh, speakers and, and television, and, and to, to the commission's point earlier with, with uh, regard to uh, or I guess staff's concern about the, pro the projection of noise from an elevated position, the speakers up here will actually be angled down and although sound is not perfectly directional, speakers and lights angled down uh, will mitigate some of that concern. Uh, here's just a, a head-on rendering of what that looks like, the, the two stairwells that staff noted uh, on the exterior for ingress and egress. There won't be any internal ingress and egress. All, all the movement of uh, patrons will be from these exterior staircases. Uh, here's just a look facing from for the east looking west that gives you a little bit better uh, condition or uh, idea of what that condition with the sound wall will look like. And I, I won't belabor the point on these uh, criteria. I know that uh, staff is recommending approval and it has found that we've met all of these elements. Uh, and so at this point, I'll just fast forward through this animation as quickly as possible and answer any questions you may have. Any of the commissioners have any questions for yes. the applicant? Oh, Commissioner Cush. Surprised. Um, <laughs> how do you feel about Condition 10? And that was actually, um, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, to, to the point that some of the commissioners have made, uh, we feel that given the efforts that we're already making, uh, to mitigate the light and sound up there, but on top of that, the ambient conditions that already exist, we feel that that stipulation is unnecessary, or at least that, that last sentence of that stipulation. Also, a point of clarification, because I've studied this a bit, um, the wall you're talking about behind the bar, if you could go back to that floor plan. I'm going to do it this way, because that was an awful lot of scrolling. It doesn't look like I have a choice. There, whoops, there you go, whoops. That one? Yeah, now, and then go to the next one. I don't think that's 18 feet. I think you're talking 18 feet from ground level. If, in other words, I don't think you're talking 18 feet from the roof of the first floor up, are you? No, that's correct. Because you said it's an 18-foot wall behind the bar. I miss. Yeah, if you go down to the ground, yeah, yes. okay. But, but it looks like it's about at least 10 feet, right? Correct. Do you happen to know the wattage of the sound system on the deck? Yeah, so the, the speaker system that's going to be on that rooftop top deck is only 600 watts, which is substantially lower than any of the... I've been told the wattage across the street at uh, Hi-Fi, is that what it's called? Yes. Is 9,000? I don't have that number. Are you sure there, you're going to be able I, to compete? I, I believe that that is uh, an accurate assessment. The battle of the speakers? <laughs> we will lose that battle handily. Yeah, okay. I, I, I've been wondering for some time why anyone needs 9,000 watts of, uh, I mean, that's pretty substantial. I guess uh, have it and not need it, then need it and not have it. Yeah, well, I, I understand. All right, so you're saying yours is under 800, did you say? 600. 600, all right. Thank you. That's all I have. Commissioner Bollinger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, explain to me the, the secure parking clause exactly where that is and how that's done for the benefit of everybody? So the, uh, this is an off-site parking arrangement that the applicant has made uh, with a nearby site that is within 600 feet, which is required by the ordinance, uh, that they have those spaces available to them uh, to in, or in order to meet this parking requirement. That's a contract that they have with an off-site parking location. That's a, that's a lease, a permanent arrangement in perpetuity? I can answer that, uh, Commissioner or Chair Alessio, Commissioner Bollinger. They have to do what's called an assurance for remote parking that we are a party to. Any agreement is, is temporary. It's basically for five years, but it can be renewed. Just the question, what happens then? Well, I mean, they're, they're, they're going to need to maintain that assurance, obviously, as long as they're, if they're operating that roof deck. So, I mean, after five years, we will tell them they need to renew it. I just want to make put that on the table so everybody understands. Yeah. We're talking about parking downtown, and it's kind of a relevant thing. Thank you. 
Any other comments, questions from any of the commissioners? We don't have any, we do not have any public testimony. Thank you very much. Any other discussion on this case by any of the commissioners before we ask for a vote? Yeah. Commissioner Serena? Yeah, so I mean, I think that, I think the, the feeling up here for the most part is the same given the time uh, of the speakers is the main issue. And, you know, you talk about the multifamily. I think this air, area is growing. There's some other multifamily, some uh, hotels, their hospitality that are going in there. We don't have a, uh, a guide or bylaws or, or any rule around the downtown and the entertainment district that would uh, give us some guidance long term on speakers, how they face, how high they, how high they go um, on the uh, rooftops, anything like that. So we're, we're kind of just spotting this thing as we go along. Is that correct? Well, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner Zerner, I think in the context of, of the conversation, I think that's correct. Okay. Maybe that's something we could put. I think we have a couple of big things to bite off now with the parking, but as the entertainment district grows, I think uh, Commissioner Fakie and I briefly mentioned the hospital or the uh, residential on the south side of this project. If I remember, I wasn't on the commission at the time, but there's a lot of discussion around that being so close to the entertainment district. I think part of the discussion at the time or some of the people that were trying to get it developed said these people would love to be that close to the entertainment district. So now they had to know this would evolve. There's going to be, you know, more, more bars, rooftop decks. So I think we need to have that conversation and maybe as we continue to find ways to improve the downtown with parking, maybe we bring it back at some point to talk about how we can create some uh, rules or guidelines long term over how we deal with bars, how many bars, how the speakers are facing versus the neighbors to the north as this entire area continues to evolve because um, I think it is tough the same applicant has a property right next door that faces the neighborhood I may not actually agree with the other one that faces the neighborhood but now you're asking him to limit his hours on one that doesn't even face the neighborhood and then you have the W which faces the neighborhood and, and goes till two in the morning so I think it's a it's a hard thing to kind of spot um, spot develop or spot use these type of projects Commissioner Cush I agree with what uh Commissioner Serena said, at some point, we're going to really have to take a look at the club district. The club district, I think, is a good thing overall for the city. Um, it's, uh, it's one more thing that Scottsdale can talk about, and, and everybody talks about it. And it has been, for the most part, a very good thing. But it has, with it has come a lot of problems, crime, um, condition of the area, the sidewalks and all. There's someone in my office who did a stay vacation, staycation, they call it, at the W on the 4th of July. He was actually mailed a letter from the hotel warning him that he's probably not going to enjoy himself at that hotel. Imagine you own a hotel and you have to warn people that the noise is going to upset you. Um, I have it on very good authority that the, 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 um, the flag of, that, of the W has actually talked about this, is that maybe that's not something they want. So it is a problem. I've lived in Safari down the street, and I know for a fact of people who had to move because the noise was so bad. But I don't think you single out this gentleman. He's, uh, these people, they're following the rules once again. They're doing what the city's asking. I do think it's unfair to single them out um, for uh, time restrictions when no one else has to do that. But I agree with you. I really do think at some point we're going to have to kind of take a look at things in general. I, everyone agrees that the sign, the co the, uh, noise uh, or whatever you call it the sound code is not working because it doesn't cover base and the base is the problem i live two blocks away and at one in the morning you put your hand on a window and you feel your window vibrating that's not that's not the decibels that's the, the base so it is something we're gonna have to look at but tonight's not tonight this isn't the case very good thank you commissioner Kush. Any, any other comments or questions i did have one clarification um, and, and I'd ask for the applicant to come back up for just a quick moment. Um, just to clarify what you are requesting is that you're requesting the entire item number 10 to be removed or just the last sentence of item number 10? It's just that last sentence, Mr. Chair, that uh, reflects the time stipulation during which the, t the speakers would have to be turned off. But I think we're fine with the rest of that step. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure just in case somebody wanted to make a motion that included that, that, that they... 
uh, understood what you were hoping for. That's correct. And, and just for what it's worth, uh, this applicant uh, has expressed that they're willing uh, and, in fact, interested in, in working with the other uh, property owners in this area to, to really take a, a second look at noise in the area and, and working together to, to potentially bring it down. Very good. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, with all that said, is there a motion for this item? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Bollinger. I move to approve case 17 UP 2012 number four. Move to make recommendations to the city council for approval of the case per the staff recommendation stipulation based on the finding that conditional use permit criteria have been met. The revision to stipulation number 10 that was discussed. So if I understand correctly, your, your motion is to include removing the last sentence of stipulation number 10, which states all speakers on the roof deck shall be turned off by 10 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and 11 p.m. Friday and Saturday. That's correct. just want to make sure Mr. Curtis and legal got all that. And Yes, we understand the motion. motion. Thank okay, you. Okay, very good. Um, so we have a motion by Commissioner Bollinger. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Commissioner Serena. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion passes six to one. Commissioner Cush dissenting. Very good. Uh, we will then move to our last item on the agenda, item number four, 7ZN 2015, number two, Marquee. We do have one recusal. Um, Commissioner Smith has already removed himself. Good evening, uh, Chair Alessio and members of the commission. My name is Brian Clough. I'm a planner with the city's current planning department. And this is case 7ZN 2015 number two, the marquee. Uh, and this is a zoning district map amendment request for a new mixed use building uh, with approximately 250,000 square feet of office and 21,000 square feet of retail in the downtown area. Here's a look at the subject site uh, from the north looking south. Um, you can see it's on Scottsdale Road, highlighted in yellow on the map here at Schumann Lane. And you can see the Galleria Corporate Center uh, in the background for context. Here's a closer look at the site uh, with uh, the existing shopping center building uh, on the site that's currently vacant <clears throat> and that surface parking. And the specific request tonight is a recommendation to the City Council regarding a development plan with amended development standards for a zoning district map amendment from downtown, downtown multiple use type two, plan block development, downtown overlay, to downtown, downtown multiple use type three, plan block development, downtown overlay. Um, and also with regard to the planning commission criteria for a PBD overlay district application. Um, and for reference, there is uh, an existing entitlement on the property um, from case ZN, 7ZN 2015, um, a few years back, uh, which approved a similar development on the property for an office building um, at a height of 90 feet. Here's the existing zoning, the downtown, downtown multiple use type two, and the proposed zoning. So the only change here is from the type two to the type three of the downtown, which would allow for the additional building height as proposed at 150 feet. Here's the site in the context of the Old Town future land use map um, identified within the downtown multiple use area. And then also the site uh, in context of the downtown development types um, shown in type three. Um, and type three of the downtown area does allow for the highest scale and intensity of development in the downtown area. Here's the subject site in the context of the existing Galleria building. Um, so the focus of this application will be on the north side, as shown here. So here's a zoomed in look at the site plan slash landscape plan. Um, the gray, grayed out areas here represent the building locations at grade. Um, and then you can also see these um, black column locations identified through here. So on Schumann Lane, there at grade, there is a 20-foot setback provided, and on Scottsdale Road, a 40-foot setback provided at grade, which is consistent with the requirements of the downtown district. Um, and then I'll also note 
Um, you see the column lines out here that extend beyond the building. So above the second floor and above, the building is popping out into that setback. Um, so they are requesting a, a reduction in the setback on Schumann Lane and Scottsdale Road um, for those pop-outs of the building, um, which, which will uh, create a, a covered arcade over the sidewalk area there. Um, and the, the ground floor adjacent to the streets will include retail spaces to uh, activate the street frontage. Um, and then also shown on this plan is the redesign of the Schumann Lane um, street section. So currently there's angled parking spaces there. This plan shows a redesign of that to convert those to parallel spaces, um, pushing out the curb to the north on the south side of the street here, um, allowing for a larger building setback zone um, and more amenities. And this is consistent with what was approved by City Council in the, the previous zoning entitlements. And here's a section view of that cross section. So you can see the travel lanes, the parallel spaces here, an area for landscaping, and then um, just under 12 feet of sidewalk area outside the column, and then approximately eight feet additional sidewalk inside the column adjacent to the building. Here's a rendering of the, the proposed building design, a view from the northwest. Um, and and you, could, you can note that um, obviously we're not talking about materials here, mainly just uh, massing and the development standards. So as the design progresses, uh, materials could change moving through. Um, so you can see at the ground floor plane here, the pedestrian access which, or walkways that will be adjacent to the, the retail spaces. Um, and then from, from here up through to level seven are parking garages, uh, parking levels that are, would be clad by uh, perforated metal screening. And then from there up to the top are the, is the office space. And then the, the area on Scasso Road here um, would be uh, an, potentially an art element on the side of the building. And these are the proposed building elevations. Um, so you can get a closer look at the proposed um, step backs uh, that are proposed to be amended by the applicant with the application. So the blue dashed line here indicates what the standard uh, building step back requirement would be in the downtown. So this is the Scottsdale Road frontage here. So you can see at grade the 40 foot building setback provided um, and then level two and up you can see where it starts to pop out into that area. And then um, at certain levels here you step back 15 feet and then at this level um, steps back another eight feet um, and then an additional step back at the top level there. Um, and then looking at the east elevation, you can see the, the massing on Schumann um, compared to the ordinance requirements that are typical. And then this is the south elevation and the west elevation, um, which are similar from the different angle. Um, and then I'll briefly go through the planning commission criteria uh, for a plan block development. The first one is that the proposed development supports the land use elements of the general plan and the downtown plan. Um, so the general plan designates it as mixed use neighborhoods and the downtown plan is downtown multiple use which we saw on the map previously. Um, so the proposed class A office and retail in a mixed use format uh, is consistent with these land use elements. The second criteria is criteria to add land uses um, to the existing allowances in the downtown. Um, they're not proposing any additional land uses here, so this criteria is not applicable. And then the third criteria is that the development plan reflects noteworthy investments to provide public benefits um, in the area of the project. So here's a summary of the proposed public benefits. Um, for the bonus floor area ratio that they're asking for in a, uh, along with the building height, um, the bonus payment totals approximately $2.1 million that will be contributed. And this is the breakout of how those funds will be allocated. Um, so the first two columns here are the um, actual improvements for Schumann Lane for that revised cross section. Um, and then the remainder, $1.7 million, would be an in-lieu payment uh, into the downtown special, special improvement trust fund for the city to um, use in the future for projects in the area. And then the project went before the Development Review Board for recommendation on June 20th. Um, so I'm just going to 
briefly go through uh, the staff's recommendation uh, to the Development Review Board. We had presented options which suggested additional building setbacks um, and, uh, sorry, building step backs, not setbacks, um, to better align with the massing recommendations of the urban design and architectural guidelines. So I'm going to br briefly go through what the staff recommendation was and um, what the, the result of that meeting was after discussion. So based on the, those guidelines, staff had recommended some additional building step back uh, for the upper levels along Schumann. Um, so starting here, which I think is level eight or nine of the building, uh, would be an additional 33 foot step back at that point. And these are measured from the curb line at Schumann. So it would be stepped back 33 feet from the curb. And then uh, a 42 foot step back for just the upper level here. And then this is the north elevation, so you can, you can see here the areas that would be stepped back, the 33 feet here, and then the 42 feet here. Um, and then also to take a look at Scottsdale Road, um, this red line here uh, identifies a 15-foot offset from what the typical ordinance requirement would be, which is a standard exception that we have in the downtown district. So staff had recommended that... Um, they keep the building within that 15-foot encroachment area. Um, so that would pull back a section of the building here that encroaches and then a couple points there. Um, a second option that staff presented was uh, an option with lesser setback. Um, so this shows the Schumann. Um, so it would only be a 33-foot setback from Schumann Lane for the upper two levels. So that's shown there. Um, and then Scasso Road would be the same, with the exception of this pop-out here, pulling that back to the 15 feet. And then the third option um, presented to the board would be just as proposed by the applicant, um, which is what you're seeing currently today. Um, so that's the Schumann Lane and then the Scottsdale Road look again there. So after, um, after discussion, the Development Review Board uh, recommended approval unanimously um, with this lap last option, which was the as proposed by the applicant. Um, public outreach to date, the applicant did have an open house July 23rd, 2018. Um, applicant and city sent out notifications to a 750-foot radius of the site, along with our standard newspaper and site postings, internet subscriptions, and social media. Um, there hasn't been a whole lot of public comment received. Um, there was a little bit received early on from a, a nearby property owner who uh, owned an office building there. Um, there's correspondence from him uh, in your staff report. And then I believe we, we received today two other email correspondence with regard to the project. And that's all we've received to date. And that concludes staff's presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Very good. Any of the commissioners have any questions for Mr. Clough? Commissioner Fakie? Thank you, Chair. Just a quick question, Mr. Clough. Can you go back to the section you show along uh, Showman Lane where you show the setback? The street cross section? Yes, please. Yes, this, yeah, this one after this one. Where, where is the right of way here? Where is the city property? The, the right of way line, it comes right into here almost. So the building right is almost at the right of way line? Correct. Okay. So, and when it comes into this section here, and obviously, you um, know, I will talk more about the pedestrian connection, but how do you compare this section to what we have like currently at Scazal Quarter, for example? So you look into, you have some massing building, yeah, it go up to 90 feet, but sometimes you don't feel the height, right? But I mean, how does this 26 feet here compare to what we have currently on Scazal Quarter? Do you, do you know the answer? Uh, Chair Alessio, Commissioner Faki, are you talking about the frontage adjacent to Scottsdale Road no. or interior? Interior. Streets? I'm talking about the interior. So, I mean, kind of like private street we have over there. Yeah, th this would actually be very comparable to what's in Scottsdale Quarter. The, there, there are a lot of ranging sidewalk widths in there. From um, We try to keep it to at least eight feet where there's patios encroaching into the sidewalk at Scottsdale Quarter. Um, but there's some areas that come out to closer to 15 to 20 feet. But I would say the condition that's shown here is um, pretty comparable to what's in Scottsdale Quarter. Okay, so going back to this question where the property line is at the building, 
I've seen in the site plans there is a lot of activity at the corner of the building, like table, you know, more connectivity. So those will be in the public area then. It's going to be in the city land, it seems like, if we're going to do this. Yeah, Chair Alessio, Commissioner Faki. Um, there are stipulations in the uh, staff report that talk about limitations for encroachments, uh, specifically for patios. So they would be able to have patios in this area here under the arcade, um, but they're stipulated to leave this area clear outside of the column. Okay. Uh, the other question, if you go back to the $2.1 million, you know, chart, For, you know, obviously this is, I mean, we are changing the zoning just to go from the 90 to 150, right? Now, when this was under the current zoning right now, under the 90 feet, was there a contribution of special improvement bonus already in place? Or is this an additional contribution? Chair Lesu, Commissioner Faki, yes, there was uh, a contribution that was required previously. Um, so this, that's handled through a development agreement. So this new agreement would overwrite the existing development agreement, so the original amount would go away and would be replaced by this amount. What was the original amount? Um, I believe it was right around 680,000. 680, okay. So there is about almost like, I mean, $1.4 million additional here, or $1.5 million. Correct. And the last question, for the $1.7 million here, the cash payment into downtown special, is this the same fund that deals with public art, or is the public art is completely different cost for the applicant? Commissioner Faki, the public art is a different account. That's the downtown cultural improvement fund. And do you guys have a budget? Because you guys do a calculation for the public art as well, right? Correct, though. They're also obligated um, for 1% of the project value to the to the public art program. And what is this estimated to, do you know? Uh, I don't know that at this time. The, the applicant might have that information. Okay. Okay. And last question was, does staff have like a overall pedestrian connectivity for this project? Do you guys have any map? I mean, I'm going to ask the applicant as well. But I'm wondering if staff have any kind of like master plan or any update because of this massive development here. Is there anything will change the pedestrian connectivity at this intersection or? Chair Alessio, Commissioner Faki, the, um, the Old Town plan does have a pedestrian connectivity and open space plan um, that, that identifies specific areas where we are looking for good pedestrian connectivity. Um, along Scottsdale Road and Schumann in this location is part of that plan. So the improvements that they're proposing on Scottsdale Road and Schumann are consistent with what's called for in the plan. Okay, so whatever we have planned, I guess, will fit this project, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Good. Thank you. Commissioner Serena? Yeah, similar to uh, Commissioner Faki's questions, the pop-out on Scottsdale Road, um, how far does that go to the property line as well? That also goes right to the property line. Uh, we're, we're actually, um, they're stipulated for a, a right-of-way dedication on Scottsdale Road um, to bring that to a 50-foot wide half street. Um, and that comes right up to it. So there, there may actually be a small conflict there where that has to be pulled back slightly so it's not in the right-of-way. Okay. And also, it's my understanding previously a lot of these buildings with these long walls like this one, how far is the Schumann Lane wall or the Schumann Lane building exposure? How, how long is that? from Scottsdale to the end of the building? I, I don't recall off the top of my head. I, Maybe the applicant can speak to it. Around 400. And isn't it uh, standard here? I mean, I'm, on, I'm under the impression that previously the city required breaks in the building every 300 feet. So why are we increasing this exception by 33% to the applicant without having a break in the building? Because as far as I can tell, there's no break. Yeah, Chair Alessio and Commissioner Serena, that's, that's a great question. We, the downtown ordinance does have a standard requirement that's actually for walls that are longer than 200 feet. So we do look to get the, the break in the massing um, in those lengths of 200 feet. So the, the applicant is proposing um, to amend that um, so they can give some more explanation as to the intent behind that. 
So before he speaks to the intent, typically, just so I have a better frame of reference, because I had the numbers wrong, it's 200. What is the city typically looking for to count as a break? What would be considered a break? Uh, would it be the gap in the building at the water tower? Would it be, I and mean, give me an example of what a break would typically be that would be acceptable? Some, some form of break in the massing uh, where the face of the building pops back, maybe in the area of 15 to 20 feet is, is what we'd be looking for for, I don't know that there's a specified length, but just proportionate to the building to, to break up the mass. Okay. I think that's it for, for now. I appreciate it. Very good. Any other commissioners have comments or questions for staff? Very good. Thank you. Now we have a, I believe we have a presentation by the applicant. Mr. Chair, good evening. Uh, Jason Morris on behalf of the applicant. Thank you, and thank you for the, the initial questions. I'll try and cover some of the initial questions that were asked by the commissioners in the context of the overall uh, presentation, and also try and cover uh, some of the issues raised by staff. This is, to some degree, uh, Mr. Chair and commissioners, this is a, a little bit of a redo. It's unusual that we're coming back so soon on a site that was just recently rezoned. Uh, really, what's driving that is two factors. One, the city council change the overlay for this area as we'll we'll get into that in a little bit more detail but really what's driving this is the fact that the city council and their wisdom in looking at what the downtown core should look like amended heights uh, amending this area to 150 feet our previous approval was at 90 feet with six foot of overage so we were just under 100 feet total and we're asking for the 150 feet uh, at this point with this application what that allows is that allows a parking solution, and I know we're going to talk at parking uh, very likely as part of this application, but that really allowed a parking solution to come above ground uh, and be structured and wrapped as part of this building in, in a podium context, and then keep the square footage of the office and play off of the success of the Galleria as a corporate center. Uh, so as we look at the overall increase in office space, it, it's going from a roughly 190 square feet, 192,000 square feet to 250,000 square feet. So it's not a, a massive increase in the office, but it does make the building itself viable by having this additional height. It also, as we'll see from the application and the presentation, it keeps it consistent with other heights that are existing and proposed in this area. Uh, the site is your where is at Scottsdale and Schumann. What you can take away from this exhibit as you look at the other sites around us is there are existing height, either existing or proposed height in this area, and we're sort of in the bullseye or the, the circle of the donut for the areas of height in this part of the type three uh, for the city. You know, eventually I'll figure this out, Mr. Chair. There we go. This area in red, it reflects the type three uh, that is approved by city council, meaning the highest intensity of heights in this area. Uh, as we go a little bit further, we look at some of the building heights that surround us to put into context what we are proposing and why we're proposing it and why staff is recommending support of that proposal and, and why DRB also recommended support. Um, in addition to the, the type three, it's also an area that includes downtown multiple use. So the downtown multiple use is the green area. As we look at what the documents say and the direction we're given, downtown multiple use type should incorporate vertically mixed land uses exactly as we're proposing. Um, as we delve a little bit deeper into that, we see type three development in the definition of the type three development, it talks about where the highest scale type three development should occur. And in this instance, it gives our intersection, east and west of the intersection of Scottsdale Road and Drinkwater Boulevard. So we are following what we believe is the blueprint for this area. Uh, the site itself is two and a half acres. Uh, it is the same development concept, uh, meaning the same footprint by and large as what was approved in 2016, the, the 250,000 square feet. It includes 21,000 square feet of ground level retail. And, and I want to point that out because actually 
in this development scheme, because we're able to take that parking and put it in a structured concept, the retail at the ground level, the pedestrian experience is actually much better because previously we were forced to wrap the ground level parking with retail and it didn't give us the proper depths for good restaurant space and retail. So you'll see it's a, a better experience. Um, the development standards. We were requesting amended development standards and we did that last month in front of the DRB for our first public hearing. What we pointed out to the DRB is we are requesting the same amended development standards that were approved in 2016. We are not asking for anything uh, in addition and this is what was already contemplated for the site largely because of how difficult this site is in its shape. Uh, we've already discussed the $2 million in payments. I, I will point out, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, that does not include, as Commissioner Faki mentioned, the additional money for the arts, which is a 1% on a $50 million building. So we're talking about another $500,000 on top of that. There is also an additional number for uh, in-lieu parking uh, for some street parking that is being altered. So there's a, and that's a roughly quarter of a million dollar number. So those are all before the construction costs. As we look at the site, I alluded to this, it is a challenging site. It has an existing building on it, but it is a long and narrow parcel. When you're developing an office building, and again, the concept is to build off of the success of the office users who have come into the corporate center and now want to expand or want to join the existing users in this area. In doing so, Developing with that width has become a challenge, which is the reason we've asked for the amended development standards and largely drives the design of the building. I noted that it has retail and restaurant at the ground level. This is a, an upgrade and an improvement over the original design because we are able to have those depths at this level and a better experience. Uh, the building itself, and we're showing it from the street view, uh, if you were a pedestrian, this is not necessarily the view you will receive because you're essentially getting maybe the first 20, 25 feet of a building at street level as a pedestrian. But to give you a concept of the building itself, we wanted to show you we have set this building back. We've set it back at the street level and then above the street level at the midpoint and at each third it goes back a little bit further and is rounded at the corner so it doesn't have that boxy look and feel. Uh, this gives you a, a concept of what that looks like from the south elevation. And this, I wanted to point out, is in keeping with the Galleria. You know, the design and the application in front of you actually includes the Galleria Corporate Center. So we're talking about really a 10-acre corporate center. So we were charged with designing this to keep in that not only pedestrian atmosphere, but also in the design and the contemporary look and feel of the Galleria. So as you can see, just from the colonnade at the ground level, you have the benefit of continuing those colonnades, rounding the corner, and having it look and feel from a pedestrian standpoint as though it is one complex. This gives you a closer look at how that acts, and it also gives you a, a glimpse at the marquee, the namesake marquee on the marquee project. This also gives you a, a sense of some of those additional step backs at these, each of these levels. This is the ground level experience. We anticipate a major art installation uh, above that street level at, at Scottsdale and Schumann, and this gives you an indication of this. I also, I cannot stress enough, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, we are not acting as the DRB this evening. We will go back to the DRB and we will have my sense is more than one meeting to talk about design and materials and structure and what we can do for the final product of this. But what we are showing you is our concept based upon the development standards that we're asking for relief from that were already approved by DRB in June. That does not mean that we are locked into the colors, to the materials. We anticipate there will be a, a rigorous conversation about that. One of the questions that was referenced was that pedestrian experience. This is looking down Schumann, uh, looking east toward the, the hotel, the W Hotel. I'll, I'll show an exhibit a little bit later. We are giving additional dedication to finish out Schumann Lane. We're also giving additional dedications 
to finish Scottsdale Road. And what that requires is that we get a little bit closer to both of those roadways. Uh, th this gives you a very clear before and after, showing that there's no separation with the vehicles, no landscaping, a, a small sidewalk that's literally dead ends into a staircase going up and no retail experience or activation. Uh, after the fact, it is a much more vibrant use. Uh, there is a, obviously a better sidewalk, better pedestrian experience. The same is true of Scottsdale Road. Uh, we have a sidewalk that ends uh, nowhere. We have you know, a, a, an overhang but no activation, no landscaping. Uh, that changes. It's an increased experience at both in size and activity and also in shading. Uh, given my seven seconds, uh, I will talk. I've already mentioned the de development standards. I can talk at those at length, uh, but suffice to say the DRB took a look at those, understood that we were in keeping with the original application, and given the options that staff presented, believed that the best option and what was ultimately approved unanimously was uh, the applicant's recommendation. And I've, I'm showing you what those step backs and the requirements are. What I really want to do is talk about the fact that using staff's exhibits, we do have that challenge. And, and Mr. Chair, Commissioner Serena, you, you mentioned uh, a break. We did not ask for an amendment to that length standard. We will, in fact, abide by that. There is a break. These are not long, unobstructed uh, elevations. There is either a physical break, there is a, a separation, there is some uh, change in materials, there is a break along the Schumann and the Scottsdale Road frontage, and the Scottsdale Road frontage is in fact rounded. But as you look at both of these elevations uh, in profile, what I will show you are biggest challenges. Given that narrow piece, we're still able, Mr. Chair, uh, and thank you for indulging me. I'm just about to the end of this. About 15 seconds, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> not at all. We are still able to provide those step backs, so it is not a massive square. But our challenge remains that we have an elevator core. And that elevator core, in order to service this building, would create, if we abided by the standards out of the book, unusable spaces within the interior of the building that just could not be leasable and would take almost a third of floor plates, which is why we asked for those standards. It's why they were approved in 2016 and why we're asking for your approval this evening. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Morris. With that, I will answer any questions you may have, and I also anticipate addressing questions that may come from the public. Very good. Thank you. Any commissioners have any questions before public testimony for the applicant? Commissioner Bollinger. Or two. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Morris, um, you mentioned the Galleria is part of this application. It, it, is it part of the application, or is it just intended to be kind of a um, transition? I, I'm not sure what, what the – are, are, are we looking at that south side as a whole, where if you talk about step backs, the Galleria adds quite a bit of step back. I mean, eventually yeah. that piece could be sold and go, it could, under the Type 3, go vertical. But from a commitment or some kind of design and use standpoint and more use standpoint, and in, in the, from amended standards, you're not including the Galleria on the south side of the building okay. as part of the transition. Mr. Chair and Commissioner Bollinger, without sounding too much like a lawyer, yes and no. <laughs> The application itself includes uh, that property, so it's a total of under 10 acres, just under 10 acres for the total application. That is in part because of what's necessary in order to achieve the heights, but in, in, as a practical matter, they are separate projects designed at a separate time. Right. But when you, there are some economies of scale right. and there are some design considerations that we couldn't pretend it didn't exist, we needed to design 
in a concept that included, for instance, the colonnades along Scottsdale right. Road. If we abruptly stopped that, it wouldn't have worked well as one corporate center. We anticipate there will be some synergy of the users of both right. buildings, and we also have the benefit of, of the combined parking power right. of both of those projects. Is, is there an anticipated some higher level connection between the two buildings eventually on that south side? One of the, uh, Mr. Chair, Commissioner Rollinger, one of the things that we've discussed and, and staff has uh, reviewed for us is a better entry and a new entry along Scottsdale Road for the corporate center, the Galleria Corporate Center, because in its original design, it didn't contemplate an access point along Scottsdale Road. So as you know from the building and walking that area and driving that area, one of the things it lacks is an entrance along Scottsdale Road, so that's one of the design features that we're looking at. But between, the, trying, between the two projects? Closer to the project, but it would be a Galleria entrance. But it would be closer to the building. That's but there won't be a second or third floor, fourth floor No, no, connection. connection. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Other questions, comments by commissioners? Commissioner Serena? Mm -hmm. I have a couple of questions, um, but the first, to piggyback on that, Expand on this, including the Galleria. So if we expand on exactly what you're talking about, how this is including the Galleria space. The uh, Mr. Chair, Commissioner, the application itself includes the Galleria property because it's part of the underlying property with somewhat common ownership in this instance. So the application for the purposes of the square footage that was required and for some of our design considerations includes the Galleria property. The Galleria property obviously is built out and is not proposing any changes other than the one I just mentioned, which is we're contemplating a newer entrance uh, or it, adding an additional entrance along Scottsdale Road. So all of the new construction will take place on the what we refer to as the NUS building, the site that we've just reviewed. But it is part of the overall application. Yeah, Mr. Chairman and um, and Commissioner Serena, just to be real clear, the gallery, the Galleria portion, um, is not subject to rezoning tonight, right. and its previous development plan and zoning is not changing. Just the uh, just the um, the marquee portion or the old nest building is being rezoned tonight. But like you said, there's um, a relationship there. Um, and that's 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 um, going to remain. So would it be a safe assumption then, if we're including the gallery as the overall call overlay, even though we're not actually changing any heights or zoning to the gallery, that it would be fairly easy for the same step step back and step back standards then to apply if the applicant ever wanted to come back and say that he already has a quarter million square feet included in this overlay and that he wanted to expand that overlay into the gallery at 150 feet with the identical setbacks and stepbacks? Is that a fair assessment? That wouldn't be a hard thing to do, would it? Mr. I'm not sure if that was for staff or me. Anybody. Mr. Chair, Commissioner, it, it would actually be more challenging than that for, for two reasons. One, the built environment of the Gallery or Corporate Center doesn't lend itself to that, and there are actually some, because of the design, as, as you're aware, it was a retail center, it doesn't lend itself to go up or above. More importantly, um, it, it's, in this instance, uh, an overlay that already exists. We're not asking for the overlay. The overlay is already in place that requires, that permits that height, uh, we are just requesting the amendments to the step back and the setback. So I, I think your, the sense I get of your question is if you're doing it for this site, wouldn't it then be easy for us to come back and do another application and ask for the same thing over the Galleria? Physically, that would be very, very difficult and uh, not conceptually uh, feasible from an economic standpoint. More importantly, we would have to go all the way back through this process right. again, no, I understand the in order to make that, like that happen. So that was based on uh, Commissioner Bolger's questions, but some of it have to do with the the narrow how narrow the property is. Um, you alluded to step backs on Scottsdale Road, but I think the narrow of the property is really the north and south side of the property. Correct? Uh, it, you you had mentioned that there's step backs because it, it's hard to get step backs because it's narrow, and then you talked about the step backs on Scottsdale Road, but the narrowness of the property is really Schumann to the Galleria. Correct? Mr. Chair, uh, Commissioner, yes, that's true, but our, our challenge on the Scottsdale Road side is the location of the inner core. It, as you see from the step backs and the setbacks, I, I had to rush through it, unfortunately, toward the end, but 
the step backs and setbacks would do two things along Scottsdale Road that are very important. One, it would make the western portion of our floor plates almost unusable because of that, if you went by the letter of that ordinance on this site. Secondly, it would cut into the parking. Uh, you would lose a row of parking all the way up through four levels of parking, so it would be a significant hit to the parking structure as well. And how that, you, that's why I referenced the Scottsdale Road site. How are you covering that uh, under the previous, under the 2015, you had those out, but when the property was acquired originally, it was still intended to be a commercial use, correct? Yeah. And, uh, and without this 150 feet, where would the parking have gone if you had built under the 2015 approval? Mr. Chair, Commissioner, under the 2015 case, the 2016 approval, we asked for precisely the same standards. So we, we had amended. Our approval included the same standards and the same uh, deviation from those standards and was approved by council with those deviations. The difference being in 2016, there were two or three levels below grade, so it wouldn't have impacted those parking spaces. So you would have had, what, they said 190,000 feet at that time, ballpark it? Correct. Is that correct? And how many parking stalls did that require at that time? I don't have that number off the top of my head, but so we were we were parked at or above code. And, uh, how, and how many floors above grade were you parking at that time? It was parked uh, below at grade, so there was a parking level at grade, and then I believe one level above, could, two levels above, I'm getting okay. stage cues. And two so levels above. ballpark, I'm not in the business, how much is a parking stall difference between below grade and above grade? Mr. Chair, Commissioner, an excellent question and gets to the, the heart of this, uh, a, a below grade space in this instance, because we were just talking about this yet today, uh, the difference is a, a 20,000 plus or minus above grade and closer to the high 30,000 per stall below grade. So there's only a $10,000 difference, because I've been told the difference could be as About well. a $17,000 difference, so the, the low 20s to the high uh, 30s. Okay. So at 900 stalls, let's cut it in half. I mean, you're, you're talking about the savings by doing this project. If we're getting the same, you're getting a 25% increase in square footage of the office, ballpark it. We went from 200 to 250. Sure. But ultimately, the developer now is going to save close to $20 million by not going below grade and parking all of his parking above grade with this 150 feet versus the existing. Is that a fair assessment? Oh, I think there's a, a significant savings. I'm sure your numbers are ballpark. I'm yeah. back of the napkin here. Yeah. Okay. So what is the, so I think the intent when we went from to type three was that the city receive a significant benefit for this 150 feet. It wasn't just that arbitrarily the entire area of the type three goes to 150. Aside from an additional 50,000 feet of office and some uh, surface level or ground level retail, is there a, a do you feel that, where's the, where's the value, I guess, from staff's perspective, maybe that's a question for staff, that the city is picking up a significant value add by approving this project since the developer now is going to just build at, at grade or above and not go below grade? Given his savings at $20 million, where's the city picking up a similar value aside from $2 million in added development fees? Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm happy to. Uh, typically, Commissioner, I, I don't know that staff opines on value. Uh, I think staff typically has limited themselves to looking at what the appropriate planning is okay. for so, this so in, in what, light so of the plan. So what would be then the benefit for, because we're talking about a significant increase, right? I mean, I understand it, you're, you're allowed 150, but you're not just asking for 150. You're asking for no step back on Schumann. You're asking for, it's, Argue, you can argue it, but virtually no step back on Scottsdale. Very, very amended standards, we'll call it. No step back, as far as I can tell, facing east. You're not building any below surface parking, so now the development, uh, the perform on it's going to increase by $20 million to the developer. And at this point, I see an additional square footage. We haven't got into the parking issues. I'm just talking dollar, you know, dollars and cents. Sure. I think our responsibility is a fiduciary responsibility to the citizens. Yours is to your client, and I appreciate sure. that. But if I sit here as my fiduciary responsibility to the city, I need to see a significant increased value to the city to, for me to have the support to get this thing to 150, given how much the developer is asking for out of the city. Sure. And Mr. Chair, Commissioner, 
Uh, I think I'd start my response to that by saying you have a duty as a planning commissioner to look at the planning of a property, to look at the land use. Mm -hmm. Um, Because Scottsdale has a separate DRB, I think you have certainly the right to comment on DRB issues as they would arise. Um, I'm not doing that, am I? Right. No, no, no. But I, I, I think what I'm getting to is one of the things I would say isn't your purview is to figure out how much a developer may be saving and what the economics of a project are. I think that's certainly something you would do on council, and they look at that bigger scope and scale. I think from a planning commission perspective, it's unusual to look at our pro forma. That being said, uh, it's also easy to look at just the numbers of a parking structure and say, you've saved X number of dollars, what are we getting for it? There are also increased costs. Uh, There are increased costs involved in the height of the building. There are increased costs. The the city of Scottsdale actually made significant changes to their buy-in program. So you saw the number, the difference between $685,000 and over $2 million just in the buy-in for height or density, FAR. That was a significant change. In terms of the experience for a Scottsdale citizen, it is a better project. So let's talk about the citizen side of that. The citizen side is the city is getting valuable square footage in dedications to finish Scottsdale Road that they do not have, and the only other way they could get it would be to purchase that from this property owner. They're doing the same thing on on, uh, Schumann Lane. So they are getting valuable work. The applicant has also agreed to complete Schumann Lane to do a, a complete redo on both sides that they're not obligated to do that comes as part of this program. How much does the applicant own of the other side of Schumann Lane? Uh, None. On a lot of portion, on a large portion of it, it is not their building. Uh, There's a separate office building. We're literally doing work on right-of-way that's not adjacent to our property. Again, unusual to go through such an economic analysis of a planning project at this stage, but I'll also point out that in addition to the citizens' experience in terms of being able to create a better right-of-way, a completed street, a sidewalk experience that's covered, and all of the things we went through in the actual uh, presentation itself, it's also worth noting that, again, something I would discuss with City Council, uh, not necessarily a planning commission argument, but if you are looking at the value to the city and what the gain is, we are providing office opportunities in an area that is lacking those office opportunities. We are allowing existing businesses to expand within the city of Scottsdale that want to stay in this downtown core. And we are also creating an attractive environment for businesses that are not here today to locate within this area. And for every employee we bring in, it is a multiple effect to the city of Scottsdale. Now, we can also talk about the percent to the arts. We can talk about what it does for economic development. We can talk about what it does from a citizen pedestrian experience. We can talk about what we've done from a circulation and traffic experience. Really, the focus of my presentation today for this board has been from a planning perspective. And and I want to circle back to some of the comments you made about we're not getting step backs on Schumann. We're not getting step backs on Scalstra. You actually are. Can you show getting Sure. You're getting building massing that changes both on the east-west uh, elevations. There are step backs that are involved virtually at every level. I should also point out the city of Scottsdale changed the setback requirement in between the two cases. So it went from 20 feet along Scottsdale Road to 40 feet along Scottsdale Road, but we were still able to come up with a 37-foot step back at that ground plane level to a increase that experience. Uh, As we go back a little bit further, you can tell what we've done along Scottsdale Road. Mr. Moore, I just want to make sure, I know we can, there's a lot of topics here, I know we're going to jump around a lot, but you specifically said step back on Schumann, so I just want to address Schumann right now, then we can come back to the Scottsdale piece. So you you had mentioned that you have a step back on Schumann Lane, so that's what I'm looking at. My mistake, I thought you wanted to see Scottsdale Road as well. No, you had mentioned Schumann. I had. 
Let's see. I'm going to go in the right direction. Oh, I'll use this example. Oh, there's a better exhibit from the Schumann Lane. This gives you an indication from the Schumann Lane side. There's a step back both at the top level uh, that's, because this is a nighttime shot, it's a little bit uh, less visible, but there's a step back here. There's a step back at this level. There's a break in the middle of the building and an atrium in the middle of the building, and there's a step back above the pedestrian level you, along Schumann Lane. Can you give me, I think staff, maybe it's in staff's presentation, we'll come back to it, but it, maybe you have it. It's the comparison between what the current zoning requ ask and versus what you're asking for, because I saw it was significantly different. You started out at the property line at the second level, and then you go up how many feet? Let's start at the second level, because I know underneath your, you have the retail with the overhang. Uh, starting at the second level, how far up do you go before you take a step back? Uh, right after that first level. Is the, right, so the starting step. there, you're at the property line. How far up do you go on the property line before you take your first step back on Schumann Lane? Uh, I believe it's about 37 feet. Is the first? It's about a third of the building. I can get you. I'll tell you what, uh, Commissioner. If staff, if staff can get that, we have some public comments. And, we'll and come back just out of curiosity, are you talking about from what the requirement would be if there was no building on site? Or are you talking about the difference between the 2016 approval just in and general, the 2019? Today, I mean, you, you've made a lot of uh, references to the setback and stepbacks, and I just want to yeah. make sure, from for all intents and purposes, when we had the graph versus what it is what the code allows for and what you're asking for the amendment, you're, you're asking for basically the, to move all the way against that amendment for the most part, uh, or, or excuse me, all the way against the property line on Schumann. Uh, the, the plans that we saw looked that way. So I'm just trying to get an idea. When you say you have a lot of step backs, the only step backs I see are in Scottsdale, and even then they're considerably, uh, you have greater uh, greater vertical reach on Scottsdale than you do versus the current standards. So we can staff to get back to it. I don't want I want public comment, um, so I don't want to drag this on. We can get back to it. But if staff could get that after public comment, that would be great. The step back versus what the current uh, zoning requires versus what they're asking for. Anything additional, Commissioner Serena? No, I think we can go to public comment and come back to it. Very good. Any other Commissioners, have any other comments or questions before we go into public testimony? Thank you, Mr. Morris. Thank you. We do have, it appears that we have four cards uh, for speakers, so I want to make sure that if anybody does want to speak, that you make sure that you get your comment card in. Um, our first speaker is Mr. Bob Pedgeman. If you could state your name and address for the record, and you'll, you'll have three minutes. Absolutely. Uh, how are you doing, uh, Chairman Palacio and uh, Commissioner members? I'm Bob Pejman, owner of Pejman Gallery, located on 7130 East Main Street. And um, I would say that any large office building or apartment building will have parking overflow. And the reason it happens is because, let's say you're driving to this building and uh, you don't necessarily going to go park on the on-site, you'll park on the street. And sometimes the public parking is, uh, the, the, the on-site parking is full, forces you on-site. And then I'm not sure if the parking here is paid or not. If it's paid, it's definitely going to push people towards um, the street parking, which I'm not sure. And it's for this exact reason that a lot of times the city, with a big project like this, they actually increase, or they make an attempt to increase the street parking spaces. That's not the case in this plan, because they're in fact reducing the inventory of the street parking spaces. So on page seven, it's stated that city is reducing the current 44 angled street parking spaces to 26 parallel spots. So they're removing 18 scarce street parking spaces. And 
what are we getting in exchange? The city is getting $248,000 for this exchange. So what's the message here? Pay dollars and we'll remove parking spaces from the street. That's one message. The other message is parking space on the streets for sale if you want to pay for it. But the question is, what does the city do with the dollars that they get, in this case, the $248,000? And the purpose is for them to build public parking spaces in the vicinity. But usually this doesn't happen. This money goes into the in-lieu fund, and then later on we don't know where they build the parking space. There could be someplace else that doesn't, record, that doesn't address this. Example of this, the parking situation in the Arts District. Since the 1970s, there are parking credits sold in the Arts District. But today, we can't even point to the parking structures that were built with these spaces. So I'm saying that the same thing will happen here in this location. City is just saying, hey, you know what? Let's remove spaces and all that. Let's not care about overflow. And you're building yourself into a bad situation down the road. Now, COGS, Coalition of Greater Scottsdale, about two months ago, put a request from some high-level uh, senior people in, uh, on staff to ask them for an accounting of parking credits that were sold since the 1970s and what they were used for. Two months later, there's no response. I don't think that they want to come forth with the response. And I think the Planning Commission should ask or direct staff whoever they may be, to do an accounting of, since this inception, how many parking credits were sold, to who, and what did they build with that? Once we have all the data, at least we can figure out what went on, okay? So the other interesting part, the city is basically selling these valuable street-level spaces for 13000 bucks a piece. But how much does it cost to replicate them somewhere else? Underground, big number, 50,000. Above ground, I don't know, 20, 30. But let's not forget about the land cost. Mr. So that, that's if, you, pretty, if you could just wrap up here. That's pretty bad math. And um, there's, there's poor planning on the staff's part, and we're digging ourselves deeper and deeper into this parking hole. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, next speaker is Andrea Alley. Ms. Alley, if you could state your name and address for the record. Thank you, Chair Lethio and the rest of the commissioners for hearing us today. My name is Andrea Alley. My address is 6828 East Almeria Road in Scottsdale. Uh, Bob covered most of the uh, parking issues, so I second a lot of what he said. Um, but I do have a couple of things to add regarding this. Um, will the owner charge employees of this project for parking as they have with the Galleria? That's caused a lot of uh, employees to park elsewhere in Old Town where it's free. Um, will the city work with the developer to give the public free access to this parking in off hours or increase the number of parking spaces required for this project? Or will the city continue to allow developers to continue to place the burden on the public and merchants to accommodate their tenants' parking? This property does sit in an opportunity zone. Um, every new development in Old Town will. If the owner is going to receive tax breaks for the next 10 years, then they can afford to go below grade with parking by two levels to allow for something that is worthy of our world-class city. This will be one of the first, if not the first, project to reach 150 feet. Um, and so many residents in Scottsdale are very wary of this kind of height, as I'm sure you know. However, this developer will save more over the next 10 years than the cost of the underground parking will ultimately be in the beginning. Secondly, has this project been updated to follow the Old Town Urban Design and Architectural Guidelines that were adopted only two months ago? According to the proposal, the applicant is not required to provide any open space on this project, but it is providing 12,600 square feet. But where? Are you counting the sidewalks as the open space? A happy city, happy employees, and happy residents need open space and respite from the fluorescent lit indoors. Concrete sidewalks with a few trees don't count. On paper, it sure looks great, but it shouldn't be so difficult to find in the site plan. One of our primary guidelines is to design buildings that are inviting. This design doesn't seem to create human connectivity. There are no interior courtyards, although I do see the atrium. Um, I see no connection to the inside of the building from the street. 
What will the city do to enforce these new guidelines? Will we allow these concessions as we foray into building at these heights finally? I'm not mad at anyone wanting to make money for their investment in their work, to be clear. But in this case, I feel that we can do better in many ways. The velocity with which this design reaches 150 feet is concerning. Um, where are the creative step backs along Schumann, for example, the cut-ins, the greenery that could add visual interest and relief from a 400-foot glass wall? That glass wall is still there despite the atrium. Even with the step backs that have been added since, um, it still seems very flat, and I feel that the building should be broken up. Um, the argument for upzoning is to build up and allow for more open space, not to cram as much as possible into the upzone site. How can this design and the parking be reoriented to accommodate the owner's bottom line while maximizing the benefits to the public and the city? Any new de development that sits at the gateway to Old Town should live up to its potential. This building will be here for a very long time. Planning commissioners, before you approve this project, dig deeper into the guidelines and look for opportunities for this project to truly represent Scottsdale. I ask the city to help all future developers, including the marquee owners, build something that makes us not regret changing our downtown zoning to allow for 150 feet in height. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Ms. Alley. I appreciate that. Um, um, there's no doubt that the applicant will address many of those questions during uh, their response. So, um, Our next speaker is Marilyn Atkinson. Ms. Atkinson, if you could state your name and address for the record, then you'll have three minutes. Thank you. Marilyn Atkinson, and my address is on file. My name is Marilyn Atkinson, and I am president of the historic Old Town Scottsdale Merchants Association and a member of the COGS Board of Directors. This request for a zoning district map amendment within our downtown overlay has at least four serious issues. One, the existing type two multi-use zoning at this site was designated during the careful long range planning for our downtown overlay. The type three requests, the greater height and increased density is identified for the medical campus and specific hotel locations within the downtown overlay. Two, page six, the applicant states, noteworthy investment to provide public benefits, improve the quality of life in the community. We ask specifically, how does this enormous height to 156 feet and a mass building meet those claims. Three, we question the gathering of bonuses for this project at the cost of A, the permanent 72 feet of additional building height south of the Arizona Canal, B, the premature removing of the existing 44 public street parking spaces to be changed to 25 parallel spaces so this project's sidewalk can be extended into Schumann Lane. C, the extremely low payment of 13800 per removed space supposedly is deposited into the Phantom Parking Fund that fails to have any public publicity about the balance to alleviate an insufficient parking garage in our downtown. It is interesting that when the city states they cannot build for less than $30,000 per surface parking space, that we have a developer who is asking for a bonus offering at the bargain basement price of 13,800 for per space. Four, if the planning commission sends this case to the city council with a recommendation for approval, then you have established a precedent for our historic downtown as well as the arts district 
for the removal of parking to the much reduced number of parallel spaces. Consider this checklist before you vote. Too tall by 72 feet. Too evasive on existing public parking. Too many bon bogus bonuses. Too in conflict with our long range type two, type one, two, and three designations. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Atkinson. Then our final speaking card that we have is French Thompson. Mr. Thompson, if you could state your name and address for the record, and you'll have three minutes. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I've got a request. Could you uh, wait to start three minutes until I've actually given you my name and address? That would be very appreciated. We'll, we'll go ahead and My name that is French happens. Thompson. My address is 7148 East Main Street. Um, residents for over 40 years in Scottsdale. Um, this was really an interesting presentation. That's not a very attractive box that they presented. It's got one nice round corner on it. They're trying to take away 18 parking places from the street. I didn't see anything there that was a redeeming factor. I mean, I've studied art all my life. That's not a building that I would want to have in my neighborhood. Um, nothing against the architects, because they only get to build boxes anyway. We don't have a Frank Gehry in town that's building something really cool. But I will say one thing that I finally realized, that you guys are our quality control experts. Is this how you want to have downtown Scottsdale look? Do you want to just have boxes here? Is that what you want? I mean, Neiman Marcus came in here, and they have quality control people before they have a product that comes in their store. If that product doesn't do well, they get rid of it. You get this building in there, and you've got it there for a lifetime, generations. So you have to be the quality control experts when people come in and they're going to give you a product, it's your job to do the best thing you can for Scottsdale. And I'd love to see you maximize the return for Scottsdale and not maximize the profit for developers. They were doing a 60-foot, 90-foot building. Now they get 150 feet off that thing. They were happy with it before. Now they've got that. They should give back more. I mean, you guys should be standing in line to give the best possible product to Scottsdale, make a phenomenal product so nobody like myself or any of these other speakers has to come up and speak against us. Instead, we should walk up here and say, that's the coolest project I've ever seen. That is an amazing-looking building. You're doing such a good job putting in parking. Nobody's going to have a problem with parking there. I was talking to a guy from McKesson the other day. I just happened to run into him. He used to work in the Galleria. I said, well, what do you like about the McKesson now? He said, well, what I really miss in downtown are all the restaurants and places I could go to lunch or dinner after work. I said, well, what do you like in McKesson now? And he says, we don't have to fight for parking. we got plenty of parking. They didn't have that at the Galleria. They weren't happy at the Galleria. They want to build a really big office building and bring in a lot more people we have parking issues in Scottsdale. I love the fact you guys can say we're, we're a little bit above code. Well, co code is really bad to start with. So please be the quality control experts for Scottsdale and bring in the finest stuff you could possibly bring in. And I would like you to talk to the developers and let them know in advance that they need to bring in the best possible project they can bring in, too. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Do we have any additional speaker cards? Well, if we don't have any additional speaker cards, then we'll go ahead and close public testimony. Mr. Morris? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think there is a consistent theme of what we heard from the, the public, and I, I don't think any of it is misplaced. I would say what we're hearing and this is from the applicant's perspective, there are concerns from the public about the underlying code. There are concerns from the public about the parking designations. There are concerns from the public about the methodologies and the procedures that allows an application like this. And, and to some degree, we heard what an applicant would typically hear in a design review or a development review board hearing about 
how to best design the building, either where those breaks are, what the architecture looks like, what the finishes of a building are. First and foremost, I would vociferously disagree with characterizations of the architecture. Uh, this is an excellent building. This is one of the most exciting buildings that we've been working on over the last year. And there are significant upgrades, not only from the public perspective, but also from the architectural elements themselves. We can talk about where the breaks are. We can talk about where the step backs and setbacks are. I, I'll reiterate what I said in my presentation about the fact that we are not changing a single amended development standard from our original application two years ago. So anything that was a concern of the 96-foot building is still the same concern, but we haven't exacerbated that. We haven't gone and asked for more than what was already approved on this site. And, and that leads me to the parking, because we heard two speakers who had concerns about the in-loop parking program. This applicant has paid a significant amount of money into that in-lieu parking program, and we understand the concerns about where that money goes and how it's utilized, and we actually applaud that. We'd support anything that leads to a better understanding and a better utilization of the funds that are available for parking. We did not set the cost of the parking spaces, but let's talk about what's actually occurring on Schumann Lane. What we heard is there, is going, there are going to be net 18 spaces that are removed from the street when you go from angled-in parking to parallel parking. The rationale for that change is, in fact, the streetscape. It's somewhat, it, it, it obviously addresses the building design and where the new property line is after the dedication is made, but we're doing it on both sides of the street to create a pedestrian environment. If you look at the parking in the entertainment district, for example, it has been converted largely to parallel parking because it's a better pedestrian environment than head-in parking. So this new design is actually both costly and beneficial, and those 18 spaces are being paid for, but we're not necessarily looking at the additional spaces. I know uh, one of Ms. Alley's questions were, how many spaces are being created for the public? So in addition to the private parking that's occurring for the office tenants, there are at least 50 retail spaces that will go on for that new streetscape that will not be pay parking. They will be accessed for that retail experience, either the restaurant or the retail that's being created along Schumann. While we're talking about paying for parking, one of the questions was, is the developer going to charge for parking again? This developer does not charge employees for parking. This developer, like every developer in the city of Scottsdale and valley-wide and nationwide, is a building owner. When they lease spaces, they will typically charge the tenant for parking spaces. I have no idea whether the individual tenants are charging their employees for parking, and I would think that probably changes from tenant to tenant. What I can tell you is that there's a combination of almost 3,000 parking spaces that are being created between the proposed project and the existing Galleria project. It is a wonderful thing to have adequate parking. It is not necessarily a benefit to the city or the developer to overpark a project because empty parking spaces and empty parking fields don't add to the bottom line of a developer or the vitality of the city. And I have no doubt that it is an easier parking solution on the Indian Reservation. But the idea is not to create low-scale fields of buildings and blacktop for parking downtown. The idea is to create something more exciting, which is what we're doing with this application. Um, we're actually creating an increase, as we mentioned. We are in excess of the overall parking requirement, Mr. Chair. And I'll, I'll leave you with this and be happy to answer any questions. We would gladly participate in your review of the parking program. 
as an applicant and, and certainly as an advocate for other developers within the city of Scottsdale, I'll also give whatever a time I can to talk about all of the overlays and the ordinance amendments that are considered by this planning commission. Whether it's open space, which in this instance there's a question of where that open space is. There's open space on the east side of the project uh, that is open space. There's also open space at the plaza level. But we are delighted to participate in any of the ordinance changes. What we're asking is, given that we're playing by the rules as they exist today, and that our request is to go from one approved building and design to a new approved building and design, don't punish the applicant where we are working within the codes and ordinances uh, of the city of Scottsdale. With that, we would ask you to support both staff support and recommendation, uh, but more specifically the DRB recommendation unanimously uh, below on this site and approve this recommendation. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Morris. Thank Any you. Any questions, comments? Um, comments. Commissioner Cush, and then we'll move to Commissioner Cush. Uh, comments. Um, first off, I can speak to DRB. I was on DRB when this project was heard. We looked at the setbacks, came to the conclusion that we had absolutely no issues on Schumann, that if you were to try to meet the standards, you wouldn't be able to build a building here because the site is so narrow, you take away a better part of the site with any height by, by doing that. You'd have elevators that would open and look right at the glass. You wouldn't be able to do an office. So we absolutely had no problems with that. We talked a little bit about maybe a little bit more setback on Scottsdale Road, but agreed that if you're standing right in front of the building, whether it's set back another two or three feet, you're not going to know. The only way you might know if you stood down a Camelback and Scottsdale Road. We thought the elevation of Scottsdale and Camelback Road was, was very nice. I think the applicant's getting beat up here on, on issues that are not theirs to deal with. I don't think we have any business dealing with the economics of any development unless the city wants to hire an economist to, or, and, and someone expert in building cost to get up there and answer. I've built a lot of things in my career. Um, I just don't think Planning Commission should be dealing with the economics of this issue. I've really looked at the parking issue big time the last few days. I've had meetings with people, conversations. I personally interviewed 40 people. I office right in this neighborhood. I personally interviewed 40 young people who work at the gallery who are parking off-site. And I've asked them why they're not parking there. Not one of them has said because they're charging me. No one is charging for parking. I wish we'd stop this rumor. Individuals are not being charged to park. From what I can tell after interviewing literally dozens of people, the problem appears to be that I don't think the building is allocating their parking as well as they should. I believe this building, the gallery is fairly full, 80, 90 percent. It's got a fairly, it's fairly full. I went and walked their parking structure. The top three floors are empty. The bottom floor and a half are empty. There's a ton of parking in the gallery of parking structure. If people took the time and walked it, instead of just hearing, well, I hear they're paying for parking, uh, they'd learn that there is sufficient parking. I think that just the management needs to do a little better job of how they're allocating it. Now, is this building good for the city? Yes. The Galleria, I was amazed, Yelp has 11, from what I can understand, from what I understand, they have 1,100 employees in the Galleria. That's 1,100 people who are basically new to Scottsdale because they were all hired to come into this town. I walk to lunch, and I'll tell you, they all come out of that building lunchtime, they walk to the gallery district, they walk to the restaurants, they're, they're increasing business. So I think this added building will be very good for Scottsdale because I think it'll add more jobs. Jobs are good. That, people are saying, what's the benefit to Scottsdale? Jobs are a huge benefit. Anyone, any economist will tell you, add jobs, that's good for you. There's your benefit. I think it's a well-designed building. I've met with the architect. Um, <clears throat> I criticized them a little bit. I thought they needed to do better renderings. These renderings are excellent that have shown tonight. So I hear they're listening to that. Um, somebody mentioned Neiman Marcus. I wouldn't mention Neiman Marcus. I happen to know a lot about Neiman Marcus. That's the worst performing store in their system. That is not a well-performing store. We're lucky it's still open. Um, and somebody mentioned Frank Geary. I've been saying for 10 years, if Frank Geary came to Scottsdale, he'd never get through the design process in this city. So, um, you know, we, we are, we're very tough on developers. This is going to be a nice bill, and I think it's a benefit to our city, and I certainly support it. Thank you, Commissioner Cush. Uh, Commissioner Faki. Thank you, Chair. Oops. Thank you, Chair. I just have one quick question to the applicant and some to uh, staff. Um, 
Mr. Morris, what what's the schedule here? Obviously, in 2016, this was zoned, right? I mean, project didn't take place. Uh, now we're talking about zoning it for more square footage. Um, what, what the, what's the applicant schedule here? What's their plan, I guess? Do they have a headquarter in place? I mean, 250,000 square feet. You'll assume they have three, four headquarter, you know, like lined up, or is it ready for sale? What's the plan for the building? Thank you, Mr. Chair, Commissioner Faki. We will move rapidly if we're fortunate to get your recommendation of approval and the council's recommendation. Uh, there is interest and significant interest in folks who want to both expand uh, and move into this building and new tenants who would like to come into this building. We're at somewhat of a, a horse and cart situation because we're not able to make commitments because we haven't gotten through the legislative process yet as to when we can deliver. But we would estimate if we're fortunate uh, to be able to move into construction drawings immediately after our legislative entitlement and the design review board. So does this interest report. just get to be initiated recently when, I mean, was there his only case or, I mean, we did, how, about, how was the interest in 2016, I guess, or 17, which is similar market to now? Um, is this, this height helping the interest, I guess, or? Uh, Commissioner, uh, Chairman, Commissioner, there are two things that were problematic with 2016. One of those things was the costs involved with building that building, the underground parking, when, and if you'll remember, in 2016, virtually every opportunity that we would come back and try and value engineer the building itself, when we came, because of the time delays in that process, even though we had been able to successfully engineer, the costs had increased every time we went back and did that engineering. So we virtually missed a window because the building at some point just wasn't feasible based upon the amount of office versus the cost of the underground parking and what the rates that could be achieved. The second part of that was when this new building was designed, we literally had to hold off on talking with potential tenants. Once we recognized that we were going back through the system, a lot of what is driving this design and, desi and driving this application is tenant tenant interest. Uh, and we have that today, and that was part of the reason we came back on this site. Yeah. So, you know, like, uh, f first let me start. I mean, I love the use. I mean, offices is awesome with this property. Okay. And I do concur with Commissioner Kirsch about, you know, you start taking setbacks. This site is very challenging. Now, the biggest thing that I see, and again, this is why I'm asking for schedule, I would love to see this project go through. And I mentioned this earlier in a study session. Yes, we sit here, our purview is to look into the massing, right? But at the same time, you have those two streets over there, and I mean, the architecture is part of the application, and we're looking at it. And it's a little bit, I mean, for me, again, I'm a civil engineer, I, I'm not have the best taste in building, but it's a little bit scary when I look into, uh, I mean, the shape of it, especially with the public art that at the corner. Now, this has been said, would love to see the use going forward, but I think there is some challenges that, I mean, I don't know maybe how the other commissioner see, but maybe we could address now or address maybe continuous or maybe move forward with some comment. But I will, a couple of questions. So we go in, we have 250,000 square feet of office. This is almost 2,000 employees. So, I mean, lunchtime show up, let's say 40% of those people decide to walk across the street. I mean, how are we going to take at this corner 1,000 employees over there? And this was a question about the pedestrian connection. I mean, I don't know if staff has an answer. I mean, we didn't see any hog, we didn't see, I mean, any kind of like connection or maybe more improvement, but what's the staff plan here? I mean, how, how is this whole infrastructure is going to take 1,000 employees or even 500 during lunchtime? I mean, outside of the parking, because I mean, I have my own view of the parking, but mainly, you know, this pedestrian connection. And, and Mr. Chair, uh, Commissioner Faki, I'll, I'll treat some of the comments as a question, just as an opportunity sure. to, to chime in, and then I'll let staff address what they feel is appropriate. Uh, two things. Uh, in, in terms of our preference as an applicant, uh, what we would like you to do and what you have an opportunity to do as a planning commission this evening is act on the land use this evening. Make a recommendation on the land use itself this evening and make recommendations in that recommendation, uh, stipulations within that recommendation as to what the focus at DRB 
needs to include. And I believe at the DRB level we are likely going to be discussing this in more than one meeting and will require some significant work on the applicant's part, the engineer's part, and the architect's part, because it is a challenging site. It is so narrow. Uh, but I think there's support for the use that we're discussing, as you mentioned. So that's the, the first part of it. The second, in terms of how we're addressing the employee count, one of the benefits of this site, and I'll use the Galleria and the existing employee count as an example, there's significantly more employees within the Galleria today than what's being proposed in this building. And there isn't a, a rush hour at 12 o'clock or concerns about being able to cross Scottsdale Road to the west with that amount of employees today. In fact, I drive this site on almost a daily basis. While I do see a healthy pedestrian count, I never see a, a situation where you have jaywalking across Scottsdale Road. It is very orderly and it's very well maintained with the existing traffic control system. The other benefit to that is that while some people are going westbound on Scottsdale or west across Scottsdale Road, there are more opportunities east of this site, which is connection by sidewalk and crossing either collector or residential streets going into the entertainment district, which is increasingly a lunchtime opportunity. So if you look at this site and where it sits in the city, and one of the reasons that the ordinance that talked about the overlay encourages height and intensity at this very intersection is because you can find opportunities for lunch or services in virtually every cardinal direction. So there isn't a swarm of people all having to cross one road at one time. It's well, a long answer, but hopefully. And I appreciate that. I mean, again, going back, I like the use. I don't want, if you guys have headquarters ready to come to the city and, you know, like we're talking about setback and maybe leave the architecture to DRB, it's fine. But the biggest thing is as well, I think those are, um, Concern that I don't know if it will come back maybe for the future, you know, to look at. But going back to your pedestrian, sometimes it's not easy to cross there if it's not inviting. I mean, you go over, I mean, with this sidewalk you have, you put this in the picture. If I'm sitting in Galleria, I mean, it's not that inviting to go across to walk over there. And I think what you guys are bringing here an opportunity for a great project. And this pedestrian connection could be definitely part of it. I mean, how, Agreed. and I mentioned this to, to you guys during our meeting, I think it makes sense maybe to look into this part. And I know maybe from now to council or now or however staff seen it as well. Um, so I don't know if staff has any comment on this or how, if they see it differently or. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Fiki, are you talking about the pedestrian? <clears throat> I think the transportation department took a look at that closely. And knowing that there's signalized intersections a half a block to the south and basically a half a block to the north, uh, I think they felt comfortable with uh, the uh, with the pedestrian uh, activity as well as the the pedestrians can be dispersed uh, from that location to the east, west, north, and south. So uh, I don't think that they were too concerned given the existing um, infrastructure that's there at at, at the Schumann. Um, Scottsdale Road intersection, there's a landscape medium in the middle of the road. I mean, sure, certainly people can jaywalk, but uh, we're not anticipating that happening with the half a block uh, ease of access to a signalized intersection. And it's not just about jaywalking. I think you were talking about easement gallery and additional to this volume. I think staff probably should look, take closely look into this. I mean, when you have an, an, a 12 feet sidewalk, I mean, an area 12 by 12, how many people are going to fit on it before they cross the street? I mean, something to look at and probably, you know, something I would like to add to the discussion earlier, comment to DRB or even to the council um, on how, what's the plan pedestrian connection along this whole intersection, including the Galleria, not just the 250,000 square feet we're doing, especially that you have table outside, you have, I mean, some pots, you have some trash can that's almost in the right way. I don't know if there is any liability to that or not but something to look at as well. Someone get to, I mean, drop in the right way just between private property and public property. I mean, um, some, something for staff to look at. Another question I have for staff, um, with what we're doing here right now, I mean, obviously we're setting precedent. Similar, I mean, the applicant come in because we have 150 feet 
in our zoning and it's done before and they have the right to do so. But going forward with 150 feet along Scuzzle Road and with all setback we're trying to do here, how does staff, I don't know if you looked into it, along the whole Scuzzle Road stretch, if we have those three zoning start happening, is this the city plan or is this what staff see happening along Scuzzle Road? Bunch of 150 feet building, how, what's the plan for it? Um, Chair Alessio and Commissioner Fiki, obviously the Old Town plan had been updated for the, the Type 3 uh, provisions, um, and that would allow uh, conversations of up to 150 feet. Um, but each case is, is going to be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. So it's something that we have to look at one, one step at a time. Uh, but the downtown plan does support the, the concept of, of those taller buildings uh, at those locations, but um, there's no guarantee that every location will get approved at 150 feet. Do we have some similar application right now along Scuzzle Road with 150 feet? It's like a similar application, a similar project in the work? The, um, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner Fiki, the we have something similar, although that's still being refined regarding um, the master plan for South Bridge 2. Um, yeah. across the street from Scottsdale Road. Okay. And then uh, the last comment I have, and again, those are concerned that I'm not going to be the one stopping the project tonight, but if it depends what other commissioners do, public art. I mean, I'm looking at the best piece of this colorful, so you have a uh, building that look really kind of like, I mean, white and metal, and suddenly you have this really nice yellow that show up at public art for $500,000. And I'm remodeling my home right now, and I know how much <laughs> construction costs. <laughs> I mean, $500,000 doesn't do much to make this nice building pretty. I mean, and the presentation so far in the application that this is a piece that's going to make this building special. And I don't know if 500000 it will be even close to get this building special. So I don't know what your plan for this part of it, I guess. Mr. Chair and Commissioner Faki, fortunately we have members of the Gallery Association who I'm sure can direct us uh, as to what we can do with some of those funds. But I should make clear that $500,000 is the minimum that would be submitted to the city for the 1% for the arts. That is not our art budget and the improvement budget for the aesthetics of the building itself. That is sure. just one piece of that. It's very likely that we will ask that those funds be directed to use in the area or on the building itself, but that won't be the totality uh, because you're right, that's probably an underestimation of, of what art would cost. And if this happened, I'm assuming this element by itself would be a separate application through the RB and through the art board as well, correct? That's correct. Okay. Well, this is all that I have, I guess. Again, I love the use, it's just those items that I feel like I wish we have more time to look into the massing of it, the connectivity. But again, we don't want to be, I mean, stopping a headquarter coming in. I don't know if it's the case or not, but I'll leave it up to the other commissioner. Thank you. Very good. Commissioner Serena, you've been waiting patiently. Yeah, first, I mean, I don't want to, my comments be misrepresented. I love the use. I think type A office here makes sense. I think that anybody that spoke would agree that the type A office for this abutting the gallery makes perfect sense. Uh, but the building going there is going to be there. The gallery was built in 1980, right? So we're talking about 30 years, and there's no yeah. anticipation of the gallery changing anytime soon per the conversation we had earlier. 87, but yes. Okay, it's 87. So, um, but it's not moving. So this building's not going to move either. Um, so I like the use, but I think that's why it's so important that we do get it right, because I think there is a precedent factor. Um, I think that the, this is really a gateway to the downtown. Um, one comment I just wanted to address. So in our application, uh, number three, part A, specifically uh, to both your comments about our purview, the criteria to achieve bonuses, the proposed development plan reflects noteworthy investments to provide public benefits, improve the quality of life in the community, and assist in achieving the goals and policies of the general plan, the downtown plan, and city objectives. So I think it's a fair question to ask what the added benefit um, you made some comments that you're not asking for anything additionally versus what was approved in 2016, except a 50 percent increase in the height of the building. So it, you are asking for something pretty significant, 50 feet um, on top of the building. And I would say, given the original was 90, I mean, 60 actually. So, but we can get through all that. I don't want to keep it here until midnight. The last thing on the parking, so this is the main thing. Um, this is a gallery overlay um, project that we discussed earlier. 
was so I was on the city site reading the um, reading the application, trying to dig into more on this parking issue. Um, was there a reason that the this 2015 Walker parking consultant report that I found on the city's website was not included in our in the application or in the in the city's report? Because I had some things in here that jumped out at me, and before I address them, I want to make sure that there's not a specific reason I shouldn't be looking at it. Mr. Okay. Chair, Commissioner, uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. So, do you ever have those dreams, Commissioner, where you show up for school and you have to take a test? I get it. The, the <laughs> I'm in school right now. For. I get it. Uh, um, so, I, I'm not quite familiar with that okay. study. So, City of Scottsdale, cityofscottsdale.gov. So, I found it there. Walker Parking Consultant, uh, call it 2016. It was right at the end. Uh, the first thing that jumped out at me when I get it, I wasn't going to go through all 100 and some pages until the table of contents highlighted special demand generators. The only two special demand generators in this parking report were the Gallery of Corporate Center and downtown special events. So I thought maybe I should dig into it because we can talk about the art gallery, parking, different areas, but I think this is pretty specific. So the city's hired consultant three and a half years ago at this point. Uh, some of these bullet points, I won't go through all of them because we're getting out on time. The, the crux of it, uh, page 42 of the report, said that the gallery is underparked by 1,981 stalls per the current use of the gallery in the office. So how the offices are being used today are much different than how the offices were used five years ago. Maybe my office where everybody has an office suite with some, some of the cubes. The Galleria is a tech center, a lot of, uh, I'm not, maybe a long tables, a lot of call people on them. However it's used, there's more intensity. Um, I don't want to get into the subjectivity of it, but that's the city's report said we were under parked by 1,980 stalls. In addition, it said the parking needs, I'm reading verbatim, the parking needs generated on site are greater than the available supply of parking. As a result, some of the tenants have entered into parking arrangements for overflow spaces throughout the downtown, including stalls at the library garage and informally Fashion Square Mall garage adjacent to Nordstrom's. I know there was an add-on to that parking garage at the Galleria. This report, per the city's .gov website, however, even with the vertical expansion of the garage, we anticipate that that property is still significantly underparked. Um, I know Commissioner Cush mentioned that he walked through the garage and that it was half full. They also did a report, page 44, they walked through from February to April to see how full the parking garage was. Their occupancy at that garage when they did this report with these feelings were floating around 90%, uh, 88, 86, 87, 89, 88. So it was being used. It wasn't an underused garage at the time. So I just have a question that when we're talking about parking, mm -hmm. it continues to be a conversation about this property. So we're talking about things that I was told I shouldn't pay attention to that are right here in um, part three, section A, that I should pay attention to, which is the public benefit. That parking is resolved when three and a half years ago I was told the Galleria, which apparently, if, unless I'm misunderstanding, the parking stalls are matching the per square foot of the Galleria. Is that correct? I'm sorry, I don't understand your question. The parking question. stalls for this project per square foot of, of office space are matching that of the Galleria plus or minus maybe a couple percent. Is that correct? Uh, the same ratio. The yes. same ratio. So at that same ratio, given that the overlay is going to allow the same use, I would anticipate that this concern of under parking is going to increase significantly as well. So again, I'm not one to, to hold up projects. Um, I agree with Commissioner Faki that the use is there. But I think when you look at the step back issues, this parking issue that is not subjective, it's a city report three and a half years ago, and unless something significantly changed, I don't see a difference. There has been a significant there change, has, but okay. I'll, I'll let you finish. Um, so let's hear, I want to hear the, the difference, though, because this, this... Well, I, I don't want to interrupt your flow, Commissioner, and no you may have other questions. Nope, go ahead. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would take exception to the number because I'm not quite sure how they quantified what they believed was the demand, considering there hasn't been any excess square footage developed in the Galleria, uh, but there has been a significant change to the usage of the Galleria. Two things have been changed which are significant. One, uh, as you mentioned, uh, there was an additional construction site uh, on the parking deck. Two additional levels of parking have been created in the garage that serves the Galleria. The second part of that, while we've added spaces, we have decreased demand. Um, 
even the report that you were citing, and it doesn't jive, at least from what I'm hearing, that you would have a parking deficit of almost 2,000 spaces, which, given the number, that's the totality of the spaces in the Galleria. So what that report says at face value is you would have to double the amount of parking that currently exists within the Galleria to match demand, and at the same time, when they checked demand, then they saw it in the high 80 percent, 90 percent of occupancy. That doesn't make sense to me. But more importantly, the largest single parking demand was McKesson. McKesson did have a very open bullpen use, call center use, that utilized employees per square foot at a much higher ratio than what we have today. That use, because it couldn't be easily accommodated, ultimately moved to a, a architectural and uh, design that works for them, back office on the Indian Reservation. That decreased the need and demand and the parking structures for the Galleria significantly. So that those two items have been the single, the two changes that would be most significant from what you're reading. Okay. So first of all, the, the expansion of the garage, um, I know I was throwing a lot at you, but the report did say, however, even the vertical expansion of the garage, we anticipate that the property is still significantly underparked. So that was included in their report. So, um, you know, we can go into the, the specifics. It sounds like you haven't seen it. Maybe, you know, given it's on the city's website, it's the only carve out aside from special use is the Galleria. Uh, given that this is a Galleria overlay, maybe something that you should uh, take a look at and, and we should include. So I would agree with Commissioner Faki, um, if there's no other comments, but I'm happy to give some kind of continuance to this. Mm -hmm. I just think that there are a lot of issues that need to be resolved given. I have concerns about the step back um, on Scottsdale, Schumann a little bit. Uh, staff, we can talk about later. It's getting late on the, um, the step backs on Schumann. Um, but then the city's own parking study on the Galleria uh, showing a significant underpark. I mean, not, not a couple stalls, right? I mean, 2,000 stalls, basically. So um, that's a big concern for me. So uh, unless there's other questions, and I'm guessing looking down, maybe not. But um, if not, um, I'll be happy to make a continuance motion. Um, and uh, if, uh, if we can't get a continuance, I'm not comfortable um, with uh, where we're at currently um, with the current um, case in front of us. So I don't want to just blow it up. You guys have had a lot of work through this. I'm happy to give you time to work back through it and make some improvements. Um, but um, that's kind of where, where I stand. So I'll give it back okay. to the Chair. Thank Great. you, Commissioner. And thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, our preference as the applicant would be to move forward with the recommendation this evening. The two items that are being referenced, both parking is a, a citywide issue, but certainly one that we're not exacerbating with this application. We're actually uh, increasing the amount of parking available and are beyond your current code. Secondly, uh, in, in terms of design, we will have a full and fair opportunity to do that design at your development review board, but the step backs and setbacks that were reviewed were reviewed specifically by the DRB and recommended unanimously and that recommendation still stands before you, I, I'm happy to take any comments so that as we come back to the DRB, we can address design issues, which I, I really think we're, we're talking about tonight. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Serena. Is there any other comments or questions? We do have a couple more Thank thoughts you, Mr. by Chairman. Commissioner Bollinger. Sure. Um, I'm looking at it a little bit more from our beginning comment about um, the Galleria being a 10-acre parcel. We're not rezoning that piece, but at the same time that we're talking about it and it's being used as a, uh, an added-on benefit to the whole corporate center, I'm looking at that as a future use and, and a statement that says this is what the corner is going to stay. Architecturally, obviously, it's 30 years old plus, and it does have a little bit of tie-in with what's been proposed um, the column spacing, I, I would like to see if there is going to be an entrance placed on Scottsdale Road in the Galleria side, a little bit more tie-in with the project, uh, color, and I'm diving back to my DRB days, but um, looking at the future use, and if you add the Galleria kind of hypothetically to the whole overall discussion of setbacks and stepbacks, I believe the whole case then turns itself around, and it's a lot 
more of a step back in, in height reduction, uh, if you balance the two. Um, and that's somewhat conceptual. Obviously, it's not focused just on this application, but looking at it as a, as a, a center has been discussed. I, I, I see that as a benefit. Um, how it holds, whether it got split, got rezoned and redesigned, that's another discussion for a different day, but I, I'm still I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, the parking issue, it was, a, it was a call center. I've done call centers. We've all dealt with them. It's, it's 10x the parking. And so if that's not part of this application, it hasn't been discussed, the gallery has been redone. It's a different parking environment. I'm not sure what the, the ratios are offhand of four per thousand or five per thousand, what the numbers are that you're using. Obviously, it meets code because staff's cleared that part of it. So in the future, if there were a call center, a mass call center like McKesson had in there to, to some extent, you'd have some issues with parking. At, the, at this point, with 3,000 parking spaces and whatever the total square footage is, the public discussion can be had at a later date with council and how that gets shared with, with, with the public and, and the whole parking discussion that Mr. Morris agreed to participate in. I think it's a good thing. Um, those were my thoughts. I'm done. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Any other additional comments, questions? Commissioner Kushner, I see your finger on the, the button. You're, so you're looking for a motion. Any like other comments, motion. questions before we move to a motion at all? Any other discussion? I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Move to make a recommendation to City Council for approval of Case 7 zn 2015 number 2 per the staff recommended stipulations after determining that the PBD findings have been met and the proposed zoning district amendment development plan and development standards are consistent and conform with the adopted general plan. Very good. We have a motion by Commissioner Cush. Do we have a second? second. We have a second by Commissioner Bollinger. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, sorry. Before we vote, Chair, can I have just one question or comment? No, there's a motion on the table. <laughs> well, you can change the motion if we, if you want. Not just a question. Motion, not after a motion, second. Can I make comment on the motion? Um, we'll allow one comment on the motion, and then we need to do our vote. Okay, thank you. So as far as the motion, going back to the discussion we have here earlier about parking, you know, some of the design and some of the pedestrian connection, um, for us as a board, are we going to be able to comment on this again or even able to see it, or is it going to be just some comment that get to be in the report for council and DRB? So is there an opportunity for us at least to get another um, opportunity, even in a way maybe a study session or to kind of like address some of those concerns that we brought up today, or is it going to be just at the RB level? Can the motion be amended, I guess, for it to come back for us to give us like, I mean, an update on what the design changed? Mr. Curtis, I don't know if that's a... No, motion has been made. Robert's Rules of Orders. Motion has been made. It's been seconded. Understood. We were having we can a turn on discussion. a motion and make a new motion, but... Mr. Curtis, do you have a comment on the question? Legal counsel. Yes, uh, Chair and Commissioners, there there is a motion on the table with a second. Very good. Then we will move forward with the motion. Obviously, Council has, has advised us that we need to finish up with the motion, Mr. Fakis, uh, Commissioner Fakis. So, um, again, we have a motion on the table with a second. Um, all in favor, state aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Motion passes, if I, if I heard correctly, four to two? Yeah. Is that a correct count? Okay. Motion passes four to two. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I want to get you a copy of Robert's Rules of Order. Any, Mr. Curtis, anything additional on the agenda tonight? No, Mr. Chairman, that's it. Very good. That's for a motion for adjournment. So moved. Uh, motion by <laughs> Commissioner oh. Smith. We have a second? Second, second. Second by Commissioner <laughs> Bullard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Guys, are we a motion to adjourn? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you.